Okay, we're back. This is lecture number one of day number two of our 16-hour marathon weekend of Android application development. Um, today will be fun because we don't have to worry about, and half the people are here, so we don't have to worry about troubleshooting everybody's problems. And going uh, to get into get into some interesting topics today. Uh, I'm going to mix it up every other less application building, more application looking at and loading up different applications because then we don't actually have to worry about cutting and pasting and stuff like that as well. But I want to look at layouts in the morning here. So we're going to look at layouts. We're going to look at can it continue a little bit more with the strings, build a string project, um, one that uses strings, um, and to see how that works. Um, also look at um, some of the GUI components as well and uh, some more processes, excuse me, some more concepts related to differences between the different things like activities and services and broadcast receivers and content providers. So it's a continuation from yesterday. And uh, yesterday some people were having problems finding good Android uh, x86 emulators. I stuck this one up here. This one um, is my build of it so I can legally put it out there. So it's out here. It's the uh, same as, uh, very similar to the one that um, I gave you yesterday on the USB disk that I still have available for you. But this one is um, a little lighter weight, actually. I stripped it out completely. Um, it doesn't do, um, it won't do like uh, camera stuff, and it won't do USB stuff, um, but you can't, you can't really do that anyway. So it's a lightweight, stripped out version that's easily downloadable from my website. So. And it's generic. It's based off the same kernel as the one that uh, worked yesterday for most of your computers, I was noticing. So it works on a MacBook, works on a PC. Um, it's very small, very lightweight. <laughs> Loads pretty quickly. Um, so this is the build that I actually am showing you. So the screen might come out a little bit bigger because I took away some of the resolutions and stuff. So it's, um, it's going to look like big and awkward, but it will run real fast. So. You know, perhaps you can tweak it a little bit yourself if you wanted to. Uh, but that's an ISO file that you can use with the x86 emulators. And also, the other thing I did last night, um, well, actually, I did that this morning, but <laughs> last night, I uh, put up the videos here. So this is yesterday, spring 2013, starting with uh, 1 through 7. We had seven videos yesterday. Um, today, during some of my breaks, I'm going to go through and actually put more comments on there, edit to see which one, what is, now it just says, this is a continuation, this is a continuation, is it, the, the description underneath the videos is not very um, explanatory, um, so I will um, definitely add some more descriptions to that, put in a playlist, so, but you can get to them right now from this website if you're curious about that. One of the things I wanted to start out doing, because I'm sort of doing this as a Let's start the day is kind of show you uh, for ITU students and also for people who are taking this for certificate credit, the two assignments that are due at the end of this weekend. Um, and we have two assignments according to the syllabus that I went over. And all ITU students who are taking this course for credit um, are required to complete them. So I kind of want to go over the assignments. Number one might look extremely familiar to you. <laughs> it's the uh, Hello World program we did. <laughs> so I don't really have to go over it, do I? Um, so for those of you who showed up on time or are hearing this information without freaking out, oh my god, we have assignments due? Um, to use this course for graduate credit, let me move this and make sure, let me just open this up in preview. Uh, let's see, to use this course and to get a grade for the course and as an IT student for graduate credit, <sighs> You need to complete this assignment. This assignment, let me just refresh my memory on it, should be the tutorial that we went over first. You might have already completed it. Hopefully you have. Um, if you were following along yesterday, you would have completed it completely. So that's a bonus for you um, if you're actually paying attention and doing stuff. Um, so the class is not designed to be extremely hard, difficult. It's actually kind of easy if you ask me. Um, this assignment, I'm just making sure it is the same. How to turn the work in. Well, you know about the EMS system, I hope, if you're an ITU student. What you're going to do, this is what I need, to, this is the, the new part. Don't cut and paste the code and stick it in a Word file. I actually have had students do that. Don't do that. <laughs> so instead, what you're going to do is uh, go to the directory, and my directory is actually in Documents, and it's in Workspace. Take uh, the, here it is here, take the folder, and just uh, zip it, compress to hello. Upload that, give that to me. One file, it's easy to do. Um, don't bother attaching all the separate files. <laughs> so, and don't bother modifying it. 
So you can leave uh, any code. You can turn in exactly what you did yesterday. It's a no-brainer. The next assignment, unless we have questions on the first one. I don't know if we had one, we probably covered them yesterday. <laughs> so assignment number two, at the end of this weekend, you should also be able to do this one. This one I'm not going to do for you. But it's a tutorial-driven one. So if, uh, <clears throat> if you follow the links, and I'm going to make sure the links work right now, actually. You're going to be using uh, project number two is Hello Android Testing and Localization. So if you click on these links here, whoops, there we go. We have internet access this morning. Excellent. So far, so good. Uh, we see in here unit testing. So I'm going to hit a bit of unit testing towards uh, the end of today, I believe. If not, this tutorial is fairly complete. So you click on the link and you complete the Android testing exercise. This was actually, this is simple, a uh, good orientation to JUnit. JUnit, if you haven't are not familiar with JUnit, it is uh, used with non-Android applications. It's used with uh, Java programming. A lot of people use JUnit. It's just like writing a Java class, but you're writing a, a unit uh, class test case that goes along with each one of the classes. Um, if you follow through the tutorial, um, it'll give you a pretty good understanding of JUnit and the framework. You don't have to install anything. It's already in your install on your bundle. Actually, it's already installed, should be already installed in, in Eclipse if you didn't use the bundle and you just installed the... So, um, I did notice a couple of things with a couple of current uh, people who had mentioned that uh, some of the menus um, don't match exactly like the tutorials do. My menus match, but I might have an older version. Um, so see if you can make it work and go as far as you can on it. The second part of it is the, the concept of localization. So what you want to do, and I'm making sure the links work right now. Here it is. This will take you to the Android uh, developer.android.com website. And you're going to notice a couple of good things on this website. Um, a lot of reading material. I don't have a book for this course. In fact, this website is an excellent replacement for a textbook uh, because this website's got all of the features, all of the um, uh, utilities, and all the up-to-date stuff. So a lot of the textbooks, and the reason why I don't do a book is it becomes out. A lot of the textbooks focus entirely on Java programming, which you know it's good if you don't know Java programming, but if you do and you just want to build apps then you're going down the wrong track. Um, there's one book I uh, mentioned yesterday for those people, and I'll bring that up in a few minutes, who want to know Java programming, and I'll show you that book in a few minutes. But uh, you read about localization here, running uh, there are many different regions. I have a project on localization we're going to go through as well to show you, and I have some lectures on localizations that we're going to cover. And uh, this exercise here is essentially following this tutorial, complete the localization tutorial, and the localization tutorial is on the Android developer website. So here it is here. So complete an unlocalization, unlocalized application. So it'll run through the steps. It's very tutorial driven. Um, hopefully this cutting and pasting will work. At this point you should be able to know where, where to find the components, how to paste code in, even if you don't understand the code. So none of the assignments for this course actually require any Java programming, <laughs> which is kind of ironic. But you can do a lot without any programming. And then, it, But you want to understand eventually some programming, because in order to write your own app that's going to do something that's going to be feature-rich, you're going to want, probably going to want to learn, get, get some Java programming skills under your belt. Uh, but in here, you'll also see a Hello World application. And uh, it's a different application. So if you're still having problems with Hello World, you can run through that. There's also a Notepad application in here. This Notepad tutorial is going to be the third assignment, I believe. So let me go take a look here. Um, refresh my memory. So the localization, uh, reading about localization, completing the localization assignment, you're doing the same thing as before. You're going to take your project, zip it up, upload it into the LMS. Assignment number three is the Notepad tutorial. And the notepad tutorial, let me make this a little bit bigger here so I can, I believe it's going to take us to that same page. So while you're out there, if you wanted to, and you uh, want to do another one, 
number three, you can actually do number three and probably number four as well with the information that we've covered so far. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger and uh, get rid of this side piece over here. Oh, I did have content on I click on this link here. I am going to the same website. <laughs> so right here on the website where it says hello localization and then notepad tutorial is underneath it. The entire exercise is in about one, two, three parts of it, plus an extra crap part of it. Do the whole thing. Um, according to the instructions, it says to do all four parts of this tutorial, including the extra credit. So do all four parts. Note that the extra credit part does not exactly count for extra credit. It's part of the requirements. So I'd like you to actually complete the whole thing. And then modify the notepad application to store GPS, GPS instead of notes. This is the third one. This is not the second one. We're going to start in on the next weekend that we meet. We're going to start in with GPS. So you can probably do the entire notepad before the next weekend. And then the next weekend we come in and we can add the GPS features to it. So not a bad start because part two is kind of a modification of the existing program. Now there's cheat sheet ways of downloading completed notepads. There's cheat sheet ways of downloading the first assignment actually. In fact you can probably cheat and steal your way through all of these assignments no problem. <laughs> However, if you really want to learn Android that's probably not the way going. <laughs> so <laughs> depends on what you want. <laughs> so if you want to, it's it's not about the grade in this course. It's about uh, learning the material. So if you want uh, to cheat, uh, no power, no 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 no, uh, no learning is going to happen with that. Plus, it's also probably going to get you in trouble because, believe it or not, and, and this is the most ironic thing in the world, this is probably, no, not this class, this is the iOS class. This is probably the biggest class for the most plagiarism ever. Because people don't have, well, the iOS class, they don't have Mac computers, and they turn assignments and they write them in Java or something, or they, I don't know what they're doing. But in this class here, people will download completed projects, but it'll have notes in there. And I'll have, you know, like it'll be signed and it'll be a signature on there from somebody else. Don't do that. So if you're if you're aiming to cheat, at least take my examples because I can spot the third party examples quickly. I already know which ones they are. In fact, you just look at the signature on the th on the thing. So you just look at inside of the code. There's you know little little bits of pieces of information left. Actually, you can even analyze it. And I have a program that does this for zip files. Actually, it tells me what 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 computer it was zipped on. <laughs> Bunch of information is left behind. So long story short, don't don't cheat. You don't have to cheat, but if you do, do it wisely, I should say. Otherwise you're gonna get in trouble. So well, if your objective is not to learn Android, then uh, there you go. If your objective is to learn Android, there's no excuses, man. These assignments are the easiest assignments on earth. So this this is you know how often can you get to run a tutorial and get credit for it? <laughs> so, all right. For those of you who do not have a Java background, uh, I'm not, actually I'm the fourth assignment here. Let me just just continue because I'm going to go through all four of. We, there's six total. I'm going to go through the first four right now because these are the ones you can probably do. The uh, <coughs> first four. Number and then I'll, I'll definitely gonna mention the Java stuff. Uh, this one here is a uh, activity based testing, activity testing. So let me make sure this link works. It does. So activity testing tutorial is also from the Android uh, developer.android.com website. And in here you'll see a bunch of stuff. You might want to read a little bit about the stuff in here. I mean. Lots of good reading on this website. And there's a tutorial. So follow the testing framework tutorial because this is where you're really going to get most of the most of the testing features from the Android environment. The other part of this is uh, part two on your own. Assignments number five and number six are on your own as well. So you get to a certain point and then you're just going to write your own apps at that point. And the on your own first one, you could probably start working on this one as well. In fact, you can probably build the interface and build all of the components 
if you wanted to, if you wanted to work ahead on this one. So just like the notepad, you can probably build the first part of the notepad and then add the GPS stuff after the next weekend. You can do this one too if you wanted to. And then bring your non-working code or your troubled code to class and the next time we meet and then I can troubleshoot problems for you because a lot of you guys are not local or you're traveling around and stuff and it's hard to do stuff by email sometimes but I can take a look at it kind of see what it is. What are you doing? You're writing a tip calculator. So it's a tip calculator activity and the user inputs a percentage they wish to tip via spinner. We'll talk about spinners. And uh, you type into the text field the amount. Calculate a tip. So you can have like preset buttons that says, uh, you know, give me 15%, give me 20%, you know, type in an amount. I actually had someone uh, do this with uh, the barcode, or excuse me, with the reader. So you can actually take the phone, read the bill, the bill comes in. <laughs> this is what this app does, and they built it after this class actually from the reader of the phone, you know, like a, it's not a barcode reader, it's just the, the camera actually. Um, take the image, take the number out of the image from a, you know, from the bottom, parse the number or write the number in. So it keeps a receipt. So it keeps a copy of the bill and then you know how much you paid on it and then you know how much you tipped. So then it stores it in a database. We'll talk about databases today as well. So it actually just puts it in a in an image file and sticks in an entry of the database so you can go back and see how much you spent you know, and you can probably put functionality in there to see whether or not, you know, you're over budget or something like that, or red flag, you know. Maybe put it like a little status thing that goes down as you spend money <laughs> or something. But essentially, I keep, tracking of, keep track of receipts rather than keeping them in your wallet or throwing them away. So you're just taking an image scan of it, kind of like what the banks do. And there are utilities. There's APIs out there that actually scan the image for the numbers. So it will pull the number out, and that's what this person did, actually. But uh, it does kind of a way above and beyond the concept. You don't have to do anything that's sophisticated. You have a little text box with a little couple buttons on there. We know how to work with text boxes, and we know how to work with buttons. You can write this thing today, probably. So it's not that hard of an application. So in this example, you can just project and you set the total amount of the hardcoded value? You can if you want to. Why not just enter it in? Okay. So what it's just like Hello World. You know, when they say, enter in your name. <laughs> <laughs> Take your name. Send it to, uh, this is how much you're paying. Actually, you don't even have to send it anywhere. Just like the second version of the Hello World I wrote yesterday. Grab the text out of the text field, which is going to be a number. Use it as a number. You know, like $10. Time ten, take ten dollars times it by 2.5 or I don't know how much tips. That's 2%. I don't know. 20%? 15%? You can even have put a scale in there like I like them, I didn't like them. Uh, I'm never coming here again. And then the button has different numbers associated with that. So you don't even have to think about the percentage, you just press the button. So, so you can you can get as creative as you want with this one, actually. In fact, the next one's oh, I'll wait until next weekend before that, because if you can hit the first four, that's probably enough for you. We're gonna meet again in another month, or less than a month, a couple more weeks down the road. So this gives you enough to work on for the next couple weeks. So all right, I'm gonna end this lecture just to, so YouTube people don't have to listen to me talk about the class <laughs> and then start in fresh.